Yo guys, what is up? It is Jaguar and today we are going to be reviewing Dungeon Defenders after I have 100%ed it on Steam. So since this is one of the first review videos I do, um, it is important to note how I'm going to be reviewing the game. Um, I mainly split it up into a bunch of different categories, all the ones that are like applicable. Um, so that's going to be originality, difficulty and balance, progression, replayability, characters, dialogue, setting, graphics, audio, bugs, UI, and performance. So a lot of different categories. But I feel like that's important whenever you're reviewing a game because there's so many different aspects. But let's jump right into Dungeon Defenders. So this is one of my favorite games of all time. Actually, it's probably my favorite game of all time. Um, I have just over a thousand hours in it. Like I think like a thousand two hundred, a thousand three hundred hours. So I've definitely played it a lot and I will show you all my stats right now on my characters. It's not the very best, but like you can pretty much do any map with these stats. Now, since I have 100% of this game and I just didn't grind the, out the best gear doing like the fastest method, my review is going to be kind of skewed because a lot of the problems I ran, to, ran into was from trying to 100% the game too early whenever I should have been gearing up. Now, I haven't played this game for more years than I can even say honestly I don't even know since I since I was like 10 years old and I'm like 21 now so it's been a long time and that's what leads us into our first category which is originality and that is one of the things that bring me brings me back to Dungeon Defenders every time there is no other game in my opinion that is like Dungeon Defenders so for originality like all the other categories we're going to be rating them 1 through 10 and for originality I'm gonna give it a 10 um the whole tower defense third person kind of game has not been recreated a whole lot. Most tower defense games you find are just going to be online browser games. And Dungeon Defenders really took that addicting like game genre and just refined it and made it into a grindy loot simulator with a bunch of colors, a bunch of like just an emphasis on good map design and a lot of replayability. However, for the casual player, Dungeon Defenders can be a very hard game. Um, there's not much direction on what to do. Oftentimes, you have to like go on your uh, god on your own and do research online. If you don't have access to like Google, you're probably not going to ever 100% this game. It would probably take you way, way, way longer than you would ever think. It would be like 5,000 hours into this game, and there's definitely a very, very steep learning curve. Um, whenever you're starting the game, you just think. Oh man, I can play one character throughout the entire game. And that's definitely not true. So that is why our next category, difficulty and balance, I'm gonna get a five out of ten, which is which is average, you know, it's not too spectacular, and that's how I'm gonna be doing this. You know, five is average. I know a lot of people like to say seven's average. No, that's it's a five. So the reason I did this is mainly because if you're going into the game, the jump from insane to nightmare is a huge jump. Um, and I feel like they could have balanced it out more from easy to medium to hard to insane. And then just that big jump to nightmare. I feel like they definitely could have smoothed the curve. And also another thing with difficulty, a lot of players won't know what map to go to next. You know, after you finish the campaign, there's not much direction. So if you don't have access to the internet, there can be like hours spent trying to find a map that you can beat that will give you good gear to get you to beat the next map and that's why guides like end game uh end game progression and like chiku's guide or whatever i think both of those guides are like super super important for any player that's like even trying to get good at dungeon defenders or 100 percent the game so mad respect to them um and washboard productions makes so many videos that helps like uh his quest for um uh, eternal defender is like super useful um if you're watching this video and you don't know what to do in dungeon defenders look up chiku or washboard productions they will literally just guide you through the entire game from start to finish pretty much and i know i'm rambling pretty quick here but i want to get through this review and have all the categories laid out so you understand exactly why i give it this final score so for our next category, it is progression. And in Dungeon Defenders, this kind of ties along with uh, difficulty. I would give the progression an 8. Um, it's above average because there's a lot of progression in the game, you know. You get a lot of stats to improve. You can create a lot of characters for a lot of different uses, which is one of my favorite things about this game is you can create a character to do almost anything. 
However, there are two points knock, uh, knocked off of progression for a couple of reasons. One, it, leveling up characters is very boring. Um, a lot of people don't like doing Tinker's Lab over and over again, and that is one of the most important ways to progress is levels. Um, there are other maps you can do, like I know Moonbase got an XP buff, but leveling characters is kind of annoying. I mean, you can always just add an alt when you're survival farming, but um, the built-in emulator wasn't always in the game. So, I mean, now it is, so progressing is a little bit easier, but I, I knocked off two points still because I think the level grind's annoying. And also, Infested Ruins, I've played that map way too many times. I, I know there are other maps that you can farm, but Infested Ruins is like the easiest and the most like consistent with drops. Well, now it's um, no towers allowed, but whenever I played this game, the majority of the time it was Infested Ruins, which was not very fun. Obviously, player shops help progression a little bit, but yeah, that's that's why I knocked two points off. Now going on to our next category, which is replayability. I gave Dungeon Defenders a 10 out of 10 replayability. I feel like it would be doing it a disservice if I didn't give it a 10 out of 10 because I have over a thousand hours in the game, you know? There's gotta be something drawing me back to it that keeps me playing over and over again for the next map, the next map. It's half the reason why college this year was such a struggle for me is because I kept loading up Dungeon Defenders and I'm like, man, I'll do my homework right after this map or I'll do it while I'm doing this survival and then I'm getting to the survival and I'm like, man, I could be like tower boosting or upgrading instead of just sitting here, you know, make it, I could speed it up. Or I could be picking up the chest each wave, you know? It's like, there's Dungeon Defenders always has something drawing me back. And there's so many times I've been tempted to just start over from scratch and like see how quickly I can get to level 100 and get all the achievements. But, you know, <laughs> that would take like so many more hours. But yeah, replayability, definitely a 10 out of 10 in my opinion. And moving on to our next category, which people may be disappointed about, but it's all the story aspects about the game. So characters and dialogue, I both I gave both these categories a five, mainly because I don't play Dungeon Defenders for the story. I know there's a lot of people who probably do like the story a lot, but I play it for the grindy game that where you're always progressing and getting new loot, getting new weapons, seeing these like super cool projectiles on the weapons, seeing what swords you can get that are super cool and like all that, finding out what's best. That's what I enjoy in the game. I don't really care about the story all that much. It's a pretty surface level story um, as far as Dungeon Defenders 1 goes. Maybe if they made the Lost Quest tie into the story, it would have a higher rating for like the characters being a 5 and the dialogue being a 5. Um, there pretty much is like no dialogue to the game. There's like three or four cutscenes and the characters... Obviously, I like playing as the characters, and I think they have cool abilities, cool kits, cool towers, and all that. But as far as their story aspects goes, I think the majority of the characters in the game right now are not tied into the story whatsoever. Like, the Hermit, is he even in the story? <laughs> like, I, I mean, obviously, they are catering towards the type of player I am, where you're grinding the game and progressing, which I love. But if you are playing it for the story, I think it's just a very generic surface level story. And the only story category that I gave a good rating was the setting. I gave that an 8 out of 10 because I think all the core campaign missions and the quest for the Eternia Shards, I think all their maps and like the settings of the story is very good. I think going through the castle and all that is a very cool kind of feel. And also to tie that in with the quest for Eternia Shards, I think all those maps are amazing looking. And I think how you go for each of the shards and then in Crystalline Dimensional, which is my favorite map ever, I think that is super, super cool and super neat. And that's why I gave it an 8 out of 10. I think it's well above average. If we're including every map in the story, which I, I'm not because they don't, not all the maps have a story, but I'll, I'll just move on to the next category. <laughs> the next category is graphics. So... Dungeon Defenders is a fairly old game. At this point, actually, it's really old. I think it came out in 2009, but it's received consistent updates. I don't think any of them have been really for graphics. I still gave this game a 7 out of 10, just because there's so many colors. It's, in my opinion, I'm biased, of course, because I like the game so much, but I think the graphics hold up nowadays. Obviously, they could be way better, but... I even prefer this art style over Dungeon Defenders Awaken and Dungeon Defenders 2, but 
there's not a whole lot to say about the graphics. Um, so we're just going to move on to audio. Audio, I gave a 5 out of 10. I think this game's just average. They didn't have much to work with with the time. And both of these categories are like compared to nowadays because I'm doing this review in 2024. Uh, so these games, yeah, it like this game holds up decently well just because it's art style. But that's about it for the style category. Now we're going to move on to the huge optimization category, which is split between three minor categories, which are bugs, UI, and performance. Now for bugs, I gave Dungeon Defenders a 3 out of 10. And the reason I did this is one of the most frustrating things about this game is enemies getting stuck. Like, on almost all the maps, the pathfinding sucks. <laughs> like, there will be enemies that get stuck on almost every map and you'll have to wait for them to die or you'll have to go and kill them. Which is very... It's not super frustrating if you're used to it, but for a new player, it could be very frustrating. Um, that's the main reason I knocked off points. Other than that, it's a pretty average game as far as bugs go. Now moving on to UI, which is user interface. Um, I gave Dungeon Defenders a 5 out of 10. It's pretty much average. I guess one of the main reasons it's average is... Like, there's... There, are there, I mean, there are a lot of keybinds that help you with viewing the map. But the map can be cluttered sometimes. As well as the item box. Like, the item box is kind of a piece of trash in my opinion. Sure, you can make folders and sort your items. But I feel like it should be way easier than that. Like, <laughs> think about modded Minecraft or, like, modded Terraria. Where you have, like, magic storage and stuff. And you can just sort through a chest like that. That's how Dungeon Defender should be. There shouldn't be, like, a million folders I have to go to. We should just be able to split it up into categories and all that automatically. Which, I guess some of the fun in the game is organizing for some people, but definitely not for me. I don't like going through my inventory. Uh, and now for performance, I gave it a 5 out of 10 as well. I think it's pretty much average. Um, the reason I say it's average and not good is because there's so many maps where there are so many enemies on the screen that your game will just keep lagging. You know, I used to play this game on like a 2013 laptop, and by the time I would finish the survival map, that like the laptop was melted pretty much. It was like stuck to my skin because it was melting into my skin pretty much. That's how it was going because I would play with it on my lap. I was like in fifth grade at the time. And by the time I finished Sky City Survival, my, my laptop fans were going crazy pretty much. It sounded like a jet was taken off in my living room. So that's why prefer uh, performance got a 5 out of 10. Now, we're going to calculate the average of all these scores together to get, like, a statistical score. So, the average of all of these scores is pretty low. It's 6.3, but if you think about it, that's well above average. 6.3 is pretty decent, and I'm going to combine that with my personal score and then average them for a final score. So, my personal score, obviously a 10 out of 10. It's, like, my favorite game of all time. And that gives us a final score of 8.2, which is actually super high. If you think about it, most games are going to be from, like, the 5 to 6 range or the 4 to 5 range. So 4 to 6. So an 8.2 is pretty high and I love this game. I still play it even though I 100% it which is honestly rare. Um, the only thing I think that might be important to note is I've done pretty much every accomplishment except for some of the newer maps. Uh, I've done Crystal uh, Cave or whatever I think it's called. Crystal Cove, Crystal Cave. Something like that. I've done No Towers Allowed. But I think... Uh, maybe like a couple of Lost Quest maps I haven't done. Like, I don't think I actually beat Spooky Invasion ever, but I've done, uh, the Halloween, uh, I don't know what the map's called. But, yeah, I, I appreciate you guys for watching this far. If you want more Dungeon Defenders videos or videos like this, uh, please leave a comment and a like, because this is different than the normal content I do, which is, like, Smite-related which a lot of people watching this video might not even know what that game is, which <laughs> I understand. But please let me know if you want something like this in the future.